Hello and welcome back to Crafting with Citizen. This week I thought it might be fun if we learned a little bit more about salt and salt production. So in the past, salt was essential to preserve foods, particularly meats, fish and dairy, both for people to eat over the winter and for trade. The oldest archaeological evidence for salt works in the UK dates to around 1200 BCE, during the Bronze Age. Now, there are lots of different ways that salt can be produced, but today we are looking at the oldest and the simplest way, evaporation. So, the basics for making a salt works using evaporation are pretty simple. Salty water from the sea or springs was either diverted or poured into flat based pans, something similar to this. Now today we are going to make salty water using one tablespoon of regular table salt and about 250 milliliters of warm water. So you just pour that in like that, take your spoon, and give it a good stir to make sure that it's fully dissolved. Now if you happen to live near the ocean or salty spring, you are in luck. You can just go out and get some water from that. Now historically, the water would have been left to evaporate until it was a concentrated salt brine. And we are going to do the same today. Pour your water into the container and then you put your dish out in the sun. Now because it's summer, if we leave our dish on a sunny windowsill for about eight hours or so, it will evaporate and leave us with beautiful salt crystals. So evaporation is what happens when water turns from a liquid into a gas. So the same thing happens in the summer when you go swimming in the ocean. After an hour or so out of the water, your skin tastes salty because the water has evaporated and left the salt behind. Now, because our ancestors needed a bit more salt to see them through the winter than what we can wake, they would often use heat uh, to help the kelp crystals formed, uh, which they could then collect. So what you see here is a very quick time lapse of what happens when you leave this out in the sun for eight hours. Well, I hope you enjoyed making our very own salt works today. In our citizen discovery areas, we often find artifacts and sites related to salt works. This is because we work in the intertidal zone, which is the area around the coast that's sometimes land and sometimes sea. And that's the perfect place for salt works to uh, exist. Uh, we find ceramic pots, we find salt pans, hearths and ovens. Well-known sites include the Red Hills of Essex, uh, which get their distinctive colour because of broken fragments of baked clay, kind of like this. And we also get sites around Inglesmeld, uh, Lincolnshire, uh, which is right next to a Butlins Holiday Park, so some of you have probably been there. If you are local to Chichester, check out the links below this video for a downloadable map of our Chichester Harbour Heritage Trail, which features a whole bunch of salt works. Now, I hope you had fun this week doing a little bit of science. There are lots more activities on the Young Archaeologists Club website. And next week, I thought that we might try our hands at drawing boats. Now, don't worry if you can't draw, neither can I but I've come up with a cunning plan for us to all be drawing boats by the end of the day.